life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Jonathan. We thank you for giving him to us, family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, in your Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please sit for the first Bible reading. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, 
and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time to, for peace. We now have the eulogy. Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan's brother, Andrew. So, no. Thanks for all coming here today to celebrate John's life. John was born April 29, Two excited parents, David and Genevieve, and me, big brother. <laughs> uh, our first home was in Chelsea, surrounded by family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you name it. I mean, here we learned to walk, talk, play. Grandpa used to call John Little Eric. Dad used to call him his cola beer. Chelsea's always been a special place for us. We moved to Claremont when we were about six. You know, where we each had our own room, that was great. Then came my sister, Suzanne. John was a fish and a big brother, and I was out of my own room. <laughs> he too took that role very seriously and very protective of us too. In 74, we moved to Bradford, Canada. John adapted well to school. He was always quickly promoted. You know, next year up. It didn't take long for his start work. As soon as he could, as soon as he could barely enough to go out, he started a paper route. Then he went on to the pizza place making pizzas and a supermarket bag in and a bowling alley with me all before he, you know, and then when he finally got a license, it was back to pizza delivering. So you see, he always was ambitious, working ways and stuff, but responsible. Although he did have some fun. But, you know, outside of school, he played guitar. Eventually became the famous Glass Tiger. Uh, Although the band was taken off, John thought he had, he already did, and he picked between education and going that route. So off to university he went, college and university. You know, his next move after that, he headed, you know, Seneca with his diploma in business. First week in Seneca, John was in the back seat of a car in a car accident, broke his right arm badly, still has a plate in it. You know, it was a rough start to, to college, drew the form. He, you know, he's not gonna let it get in his way. So with all he can muster, he's, you know, got girls, friends, everybody else, help him do notes, which, anyhow. <laughs> John grab, graduated with his diploma and enrolled at Lakehead University, where he earned his degree. I met some of his lifelong friends, Mike and Teresa here. In 81, John took a trip to Barbados with Mum and Sue. He returned the following summer, worked with Uncle Rich in the rental cars. It seemed like every summer after that, learning the business, back up to university, gave Uncle Rich some time off, and he enjoyed himself. I think it was calling him. 
And when he graduated in 84, well, he actually told me, you know, just one more time, and then I'll come back and work. That never happened. <laughs> he stayed here. You know, he never went back to Canada. He ended up staying here. And then he moved in with, you know, Uncle Brian, Auntie Bonds, and Nick and Lisa, and Lindsay. And he started working with Uncle Brian and Uncle Pete, Quality Motors. Quickly moved through that and parts and everything else. There for a few years and he moved on. When they all moved on. John developed friendships quickly and rekindled friendships. He loved spending time in Anchorage and shared his love of motorsports. Entered rallies, you know, he entered rallies and stuff and did a bit of that. John even managed to enter a rally in a rental car somehow. Yeah. Still paying for that to this day. <laughs> Simultaneously, John fell in love with sailing. Under the guidance of Stephen Ezreal and John Still, he quickly learned the ropes of racing. As life continued, he bought himself a piece of land, built the first stage of his own home, and became the director at Wincal. In 96, Kimberly arrived. He was now a daddy. Two shorts later, two years, yeah, two short years later, Scotty arrived. And that changed things a bit for him. He was now a dad. He called me in 98 to say direct rentals, asking me if I'd take over their rentals with him, partner with him. So I said, yeah. I immediately said, yes, I'm coming. He suggested I go home and discuss it with my wife first. I said, yeah, but I'm still coming. You know, and then and we ran there at rentals for almost 24 years together. Together, Dad and Uncle Andrew ran their rentals for 24 years. Often, when Dad thought that they should go left, Uncle Andrew thought that they should go right. And they both knew that if they ever immediately thought to go in the same direction, that something must be wrong. Together, they always found a way forward, and together they thrived. When Kim and I were small, Dad bought Shangri-La. We quickly realized we had a new sibling. He quickly reserved Wednesdays for tinkering on the boat and the weekends for shaking the dust off the sails. The boat kept Dad busy, and Kim and I have countless special memories sailing up the coast and down the islands with him. Having passed his love of sailing on to us at a young age, he joined us at regattas all over the world, where he would proudly declare to everyone, they're here to sail, I'm just here to pay the bills. Dad was up for any adventure, even with a broken leg. Despite falling off the roof and breaking his leg in several places, he refused to miss me compete in Denmark. During this event, we became very easy to spot. I carried the bags, and my dad hobbled along on crutches, determined to keep up with me. But for dad, that still wasn't enough. We followed this up with crammed rush hour tube rides in London, three full days on foot at the Edinburgh Fringe, and even climbed to the very top of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This trip was when I truly realized that my dad doesn't quit and doesn't take no for an answer. His unwavering support for us extended far beyond regattas. He encouraged Kim and me in every aspect of our lives, including helping Kim pack up her car and drive across Canada for another degree. Together, they got their first impression of the East Coast and explored the Bay of Fundy somewhere that dad had always wanted to visit. The pandemic closed the doors of diet rentals and encouraged dad into early retirement. Although he often said he was ready to retire, he had only recently embraced retired life. Without a doubt, the past three years have been some of the happiest in his life, with the freedom to sail, spend more time with family, and start exploring the world with Mamta. Dad and Mamta met at the beginning of 2019 during the Mount Gay Regatta. He was quick to call her whether to race, assist with boat maintenance, or simply just go for a sail. The following year, she joined Dad on Shangri-La for the Grenada Sailing Week, which was the beginning of something special for both of them. 
Madame Tiff found Dad to be kind, considerate, loving, and a real gentleman. They quickly became inseparable, always holding hands. And if you looked for one of them, you always found the other. Dad was excited about Mams' new Airbnb venture at Kismet Gardens and loved to help out however he could. Whether this was providing business advice, sourcing materials, or getting his hand dirty. Dad was introduced to Mantis' parents during their trip to Barbados when her father was worried about his blood pressure. Dad quickly rushed over with the blood pressure monitor and assured her dad that all was normal. Months later, when Dad and Mamta finally went to the UK and she broke the news of their relationship to her parents, they excitedly said, Oh, the doctor? <laughs> Mamta's traditional parents expected that she would end up with an Indian guy. However, Dad quickly settled any concerns by telling them, I am Indian, I'm West Indian with a big grin on his face, of course. Her parents laughed, and from that moment, he was family. Dad won the heart of Mamta's family and friends. Whenever anyone visited Barbados, he was eager to take them snorkeling on shipwrecks and often spent more time with them than Mamta. Dad and Mamta's travel plans evolved, with sailing trips to the Grenadines, Christmas in Canada, as well as new places like Spain and Croatia. They both knew there was much more to come with trips planned to, Ken to Kenya and the Galapagos. One of the most reassuring things about my dad was his routines. From waking up Kim and I for school with funny limericks to making Mamta's tea at 4 a.m. And, and walking 10K each morning. There will never be enough time to say how much my dad will be missed or how much he accomplished. He loved life, he lived life. Dad was always in motion, body and mind, moving forward, always looking to the future. He was a hard worker with a drive for success, always planning future adventures and bringing us along with him. He loved his soulmate, his family, and his friends dearly and deeply. We will miss him forever. He will always be in our hearts. You may remain sitting as we sing Psalm 23 to be followed then by the second Bible reading.
A reading from Isaiah 57. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into a peace, they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. I speak to the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Part of the 22nd verse of the third chapter of the book of Lamentation, where the writer reminds us that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. On this journey of life, we encounter situations and events that sometimes can really deflate us, can really rob us of our joy and our peace. And as we wrestle with such events and circumstances, we are sometimes led to wonder if there's anything in this world that remains constant. Change is extremely difficult for us to deal with. And the way how the world is going these days, as soon as you seem to become aware or to be able to master something, it changes. And you're always one step or two steps behind. And the older we become, the more difficult it is to cope with change. And the only way we are able to really cope with change and try to keep abreast is when there is help around or help that is easily accessible for us. Help being accessible for us can guide us through the process of change. And even if it cannot guide us through, we are assured that there is someone that we can turn to, to allow us to be able to cope with the changes of life. And as we think about the changes of life, one of the biggest problems and challenges that we have in our life that brings about change is a broken bond of love. And a broken bond of love presents itself with this thing called death, where the physical is no longer there. And we wrestle with the change brought about by this broken bond at physical death. And as we wrestle, the writer reminds us today, as he reminded the people of Israel, that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It remains constant throughout. And as we embrace an understanding of God's love remaining constant throughout, and recognize that we are not able sometimes to do everything on our own, we should be led then to really see the importance of relationships where through relationships, we are able to, to experience and to share God's love in such a way that even though we wrestle with the changing conditions, we do so still as a people of hope, a people of comfort and peace, knowing that all is well. And so through relationships, where there is genuine agape love, love that speaks about sacrifice and commitment, we are able to weather the stormy conditions of this life as we journey. As we gather today to give God thanks for the life and witness of our departed brother, Jonathan, we are at such a position where we will wrestle with the change at the physical bond being broken. But we can take our hope and our strength to pick the pieces up and to go forward with a positive attitude, holding on not only to the memories that we would have shared where we experienced love, but holding on to the relationships that we are able to truly, truly share and feel love. And when we are able to do this, even though we mourn, we mourn not as a people without hope, but a people of great confidence 
knowing that this steadfast love of God that never changes is still there, not only for our departed brother Jonathan, but for us. And as we're able to really embrace this, this love, this unchangeable love through the relationships, we will be able to have the shoulder to lean on, the ear to listen, the voice to comfort and encourage to go forward through this difficult period. And so I invite you to cherish the memories that you would have had of your departed loved one. These memories would bring you joy. Some would probably bring you anxiety and even fear. But as you cherish the memories, allow them to inform how you respond to life going forward. There may be a message coming from the cherished memories that can very well help you to deal with some issue or event to come. And as you cherish the memories, do not, do not spare any time to let the people close to you, the people who you really love and care for, know that love is genuine and it is there for us. And, through, and so through this love, we'll be able to make the sacrifices necessary to help each other, to lift each other up. And even though the change is there, we look towards the change with a people of great confidence, knowing that we can triumph over any adversity. We thank God for the life of our departed brother, and we entrust him to the safekeeping of Almighty God, praying that he will receive him more and more into his joyful embrace, and that he'll be granted that rest and peace that surpasses all understanding. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light, petrol, shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the tender mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Your response to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, shall be hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, and we commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Please stand. In the words in which Jesus instructed us to prayer, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, As we forgive those who trespass against us. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant of your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal from of the earth unto earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant of your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. 
for they take with them the records of their deeds. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift his countenance upon him and give him peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the presence of his glory of exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all who faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. attention to the envelopes in your booklets, the children variety of Barbados, there will be personnel here to receive the envelopes as you leave. Jai Jagdish Hai 
Sorry. 